Um, I am updating my uh, video that I put out on uh, processing uh, the Sea Star images using PixInsight. Uh, before I go further into this, these are the following plugins that I recommend, uh, some of which, like the Blur Noise and Star Exterminators, you're going to have to purchase. Uh, the investment in these tools are really well worth it. And um, all of these tools are really well documented throughout um, and, and definitely available on YouTube. All right. The way you see these uh, plugins listed here, that's kind of the order in which they will be used uh, during processing. So that being said, um, let's get uh, started with um, PixInsight. So um, the first thing that we're going to do when we're um, before we go to stack the data, we're going to go into process all processes, and we are going to um, go into cosmetic correction. <laughs> All right, and we're going to click on the auto detect, and we're going to click on both the hot and cold sigma. All right, and then we're going to take this diagonal and drag it onto the workspace and close this out. And I like to move everything out of the way here. Um, so now we can start um, the stacking process. So we're going to go into script. And we're going to go into batch processing and then down to the weighted batch pre-processing. It does take a few seconds for this uh, script to come up. So I typically like to go into reset. I like to reset all parameters, clear all file list, and click um, OK. And this will take care, it'll purge the cache for us, it'll purge any data that we have embedded in uh, WBPP. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is select an output directory. So I've been processed a few um, images recently, and I might just reset a few things. So let me go into my scratch drive. And I'm going to go into M8. All right, it's a clean folder. There's there's nothing else in there, so we'll just leave that as is, and that will be uh, the folder that I use. So I'm going to go click on the output directory. I'm going to go and select M8 sub as uh, the folder. Here it is displayed. Now I'm going to click on lights and I will select that folder again and click on one file, hit control A to highlight everything and then select open. And here it see you can see that we have 136 frames. I'm going to go into calibration tab. Here at the top, highlight what we have here. I'm going to go over here, select off or deselect uh, dark and flats. Darks are calibrated with every frame using this the C star. All right, and due to its uh, small size, you don't really need to worry about flats. Next, we go into Cosmetic Correction. I just click off Automatic, select Processor Process 01, which is what we set up earlier. And here we can now run the script. So this is a slight editing of the process so far because I realized as I was uh, stacking those images that I did not cover drizzle. So up at the top here, you want to go into post calibration uh, 
tab and um, you want to enable Drizzle configuration. And I'm going to leave it at one. Now, if you have lots of files where you have, you know, actually uh, several hundred uh, or more, you could go with uh, a, a scale of two. But for right now, I'm just going to go with um, one. All right. And we've done everything else, you know, uh, that we, we talked about. Um, let me see here just to make sure. Actually, I have to redo this. Um, and then click off automatic and process one. All right. So here we have the um, 136 frames that we talked about. We have um, set the calibration settings and we also uh, um, have chosen to. Uh, use the process 01 template for cosmetic uh, correction. And we have set the drizzle configuration. So now we're going to go hit run and hit continue. And it's going to go through all of these uh, areas in stacking. And I'll, like I said, I will stop the video now and come back when this is done. Okay, so we've finished, and out of the 136 uh, frames that we used, five were rejected in the bad frames rejection, and two were rejected during integration. So it took about four minutes and 22 seconds to process or stack these images. So now that it's stopped, we can just click done and we can click uh, done again. And then we can exit out of WBPP. All right, now we can go into file. And we're gonna open up a file that was created during the stacking process. So we're gonna hit open. And we're going to go into the M8 subfolder. We're going to go into the master because that's where these are stored. I'm going to change the view here to detail so you can better see what we're going to choose. Now, since we used Drizzle, I'm going to use uh, this file. All right. So with when you use Drizzle, you do end up with two uh, frames that you see here. This shows uh, auto rotation. We don't really need it here. Um, and then this will be the image file that we're going to uh, utilize. We can already make out an outline of the image. So once highlight this just by clicking on it, hit Control A, and there you have it. Now you may notice a green U hue. Um, that's natural with one shot colored cameras and the, the ZWO use the C star uses the uh, 462 sensor color sensor and, and it's more prone or more sensitive to green uh, to the green ch channel. So we just need to deal with this. And the way we do that was we go up here to the split RGB channels. And it'll create or give us the th three separate channels. Um, I usually bring or drag over blue and red. All right. I then go into process, all processes. And then I am going to um, go into linear fit. All right. Once into uh, linear fit, what we'll do is click on the reference image uh, folder, hit the drop down and select green, because that's what we're dealing with. Click OK, and then you can drop this triangle into each of these. Now you'll get a brief um, activity circle here. Once, it fit, once it's finished, you know you can move on to the next one. And you're going to drop it in here again doesn't take very long. All right. 
Um, that's done. I'm going to minimize and drag this up at the top here. Now I'm going to go into um, process, all processes, and I'm going to look for uh, channel combination. Right here. All right. And this is kind of semi-automatic. By default, RGB will be selected and RGB and inherit Ethermetic solution will automate. All these will be checked. So what all we have to do is for each of these channels, we're going to select the one that corresponds to that. For example, this shows integration with the uh, red channel. Just click our OK. Same thing with the green. Click OK. Same thing with the blue. And then click OK. Now, once you're done with this, click on the uh, Apply Global. It'll create a new file for us. I'm done with channel combination, so I just want to get it out of the way. So I'm going to bring the green over here, and I'm just going to remove all of these. Okay, I'm going to drag this over here, and I will hit um, Control A. That should uh, give us a more natural looking frame. Okay, and there we are. Um, we're going to get rid of the green hued frame here. So uh, we're going to rename this M8. And I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So what this, what duplicating the frame does is uh, you always will have a backup of what you just did. So if any changes that you make later on are bad, you can always revert back to the previous uh, duplicate. So this shows M8 clone, whereas this is the original one. I'm just going to minimize it and bring it down at the bottom. So here we go. So now, uh, I kind of like that. I don't I do see a little bit of fringing, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to go into process, all processes, and we are going to go into um, dynamic crop. All right. So now that we have this over here, I'm just going to drag across here. And I want to, you know, crop out the, as minimal as I can because um, I'm still using a version of the software that still doesn't natively do um, mosaics. So the view is really narrow there. I'm just going to check. Okay. I see most of the noise pretty much at the top. And I'm going to select uh, Execute, and we will get a message saying that, hey, your astrometric solution will be changed or, and, you know, uh, you need to be aware of this because you may not be able to uh, correct it. So, yes, because we will be able to correct it. So, yes, I then go in Select. Um, um, sorry, this thing is in the way. I'm going to have to move this out. Zoom to original fit here. Uh, we are ready. We, we've gotten rid of more noise here. I'm going to close out dynamic crop. <laughs> and I'm going to go into image analysis and then image solver. All right. And I'm just going to click OK. All right. So I'm going to go into processes, all process, and I'm going to go back into the photo calibration uh, uh, function. Okay, I'm going to 
click on here, select Alt N again, and I'm going to bring this right into here. All right, I'm going to select from preview, and I want to go with preview one. Whoops, preview one. I click OK, and now I'm going to hit apply again. Now it's running as advertised, and I'm just going to minimize these, get them out of the way. And don't worry about what you see here. We're going to go, uh, I'm going to go back into our optimal fit. I'm going to get rid of the preview. And I'm going to hit Control A. And uh, here. Now we have a more realistic color. Now, how do I quantify or qualify that statement? More realistic color. Well, there, we've had, you know, there's been numerous surveys launched to survey the deep skies, all right? And with the various colors that have come in from these surveys, um, we have names for those surveys, and Pix Insight uses that survey information um, to help us provide realistic colors to uh, these targets or these objects. So I'm not doing anything at random, okay? I'm not choosing what color I want for this. All right, now, um, that being said, we can now try to get rid of some noise. So we do that. I go into the script and I will go into the toolbox and run the first of that, those plugins that uh, I talked at the very beginning. Um, I just hit execute and let it run. It, it won't take very long. Okay, so here what we have is where the noise has been removed from this image. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. And the next script I'm going to run is called Easy, uh, it's from the Easy Processing Suite, and it's called Easy Denoise. Now, I'm going to just simply, I'm just going to choose Run. And this will take quite a bit of time, so I'm going to pause the uh, video here and resume once it is done. We now have a, uh, a finished uh, process. Easy Denoise has completed, and we're just going to remove some of these uh, frames out of our way. And here we go. Since we finish this the noise removal process well, I'm going to duplicate it all right and I'm going to minimize this and drag it down here so what we're going to do next is try to sharpen this up a little bit so we're going to go into process all processes and we are going to select um, blur exter exterminator and this is uh, one of those that we talked about before, and you'll need to purchase this. Um, I highly recommend it. it. It just really works well. So you've got to select an AI, and there's only one to select. And you want to turn, click here, this circle here, that's the uh, real-time preview. All right. And what that just did was show you what to expect um, when it's finished. And so I'm just going to hit uh, apply here. Blur exterminator takes just a little bit of time. It, it's not terrible. And there's not a lot of data really um, to go through here. So and in fact, Blur Exterminator is done. I'm just going to minimize and drag up here. 
I'm going to close out the real-time preview. And I'm going to move on to the next step in the uh, noise exterminator process. I'm going to select the AI. Again, just one to select. I'm going to hit the circle here, which is the, another real-time preview. All right, now you have a little bit more um, control here. I'm, I'm just going to play with it, and you'll see how that um, works with uh, the real-time preview. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. I don't want too much, and I'm going to bring maybe the, the noise down a little bit too. Hey, my dog Annabelle came in. All right. So uh, I'm going to go with that and I'm going to hit apply. All right. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to get rid of the preview. Whoops, it's still busy. And here we are. Okay, so since we did the noise, um, actually there's probably, there's, a, I'm gonna try the star exterminator, but before I do, I want to clone this. All right, and you'll know why here shortly. Okay, I'm just going to, Minimize this and drag it down here. Move this over here. I'm going to go into process and all processes, and I will go into Star Exterminator. Select the AI. There's three to choose from. And I'm just going to go with the no noise here. And um now, what this does is will separate the stars from the nebula. It's a real pleasing effect, actually. But then we can work on those two frames individually to try to get maybe a little bit sharper detail of um, the nebula, bring out a little bit more detail. Um, so let's get busy with it. So. It really doesn't take very long. You can see the processing is, progression is moving up quickly. And I'm going to minimize this. And here we have the two, okay? So I'm gonna rename each one and it'll become apparent later. I'm gonna rename this star starless and also this one to stars okay so i'm going to work with the stars with the starless first and um, i'm going to bring up um, uh, curves transformation All right, click here, click on this uh, checkbox, and click on the real-time preview, and here it is, all right? So um, a little bit of this goes a long way, all right? But if you do something, you know, that, that totally ruins it, you know, you can hit reset. All right, so I'm just gonna put a mark here, put a mark here, and I'm just gonna try to play with it a little bit, be very careful. Well, just, and every target that you do requires a little bit different approach.
And I may try to experiment with the uh, saturation a little bit. Not much. And I'm going to hit apply. Now, this is where the subjectivity comes in. It's it's kind of how you want. Well, while we while Pixinsight Insight did give us a more cor corrected uh, color, um, this is more about um, how you want it to look. So I'm going to go with that. And this is going to be a little bit darker than it actually is. And I mean, if I get rid of the uh, preview here, you'll see. So now I'm going to move this aside, bring this over here. And I'm going to hit the real time preview. And I'm going to try. Go back in here. I'm going to try dim some of these stars down a little bit. All right. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to. Minimize this, bring it on up here, get rid of the um, real-time preview. And now we need a process to combine what we see here. All right, so the way to do that is we need to go into pixel map. All right, now I have a little shortcut, but not a shortcut, but a little cheat sheet for pixel insight. So I found the little shortcut and I'm going to paste that in here. So now you know why we renamed stars and starless. All right. And we're going to hit um, apply. And here we go. Hmm. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes you may not get the desired effect. So, um, let's look at what we had before this. Okay. So, I'll be honest with you, I think we could do maybe a little bit better without um, using star. Um, Exterminator. So I'm going to close this out. Click yes. I'm going to re uh, duplicate this, minimize this, and I will run curves transformation. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to bring up the Real-time preview, and I'm going to play around with it here. And maybe go saturation a tad. And that's going to be it. So I'm going to hit apply. And there we have it. Um, the crazy thing about Pix Insight is, at least for my understanding, and, and, and please understand, folks, I'm a relative newbie when it comes to using PixInsight. So if you see or if you know a better uh, path, uh, especially from this point to what, what I'm going to show you if, you, if you, if you know something better, uh, please let me know.
Now, um, one thing that I would recommend that is you, you save your projects. So I'm going to go into here. I'll save this. I'll call this M8 2024. And I'm going to put my name on there. All right. I'm going to click here because I have a, a folder for all the projects. I hit save and OK. And then you're going to see it's going to save off everything that has been done up to this point. Now, I'm going to I'm going to increase or zoom in on this. There's a method to my madness, folks. All right. So I don't know of any other way or any other format that actually works to save this thing. All right. But I kind of go around that. I go in, I, I, I go in, use a snipping tool. I hit new. And I will essentially crop this. And I will save it in that folder. The master, and I'm going to put M8 2024. All right. I'm going to go in where the Pix Insight scratch drive is. And I will go into master. It's right here. I'm going to save this, save it as a tip file. And All right, so now that I do have it as a TIFF file, I'm going to right click and I'm going to open up um, Photoshop. And I do have a few plugins um, in Photoshop, and I highly recommend if you use Photoshop that you might want to consider uh, using this. Now, before you do anything, whether you're using Photoshop or any other photo um, processing uh, software, I'd highly recommend that the first thing you want to go to do is make sure you go into the mode and you select 16 bits. From there, what I do is I'll go into filter, pro digital uh, software, and I'll look at Astro Flat Pro. All right, and I don't think we need the, that much dark noise. Um, I, I think I think it would take too much of the detail, so I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to then go into Star Shrink. You can see, like, look at this bright star. If I clicked on it, you can see the original, what it looked, how big it was originally. Now, um, I will probably go in back into filter and I will use um, camera raw filter. And I'm just going to darken it a little bit. I may try to bring up some color a little bit. Not much. Sometimes it's I try to do as as minimal as I can with Photoshop because that creates it can it also can create noise. Uh, texture just enough to bring up some subtle details. Clarity. Now I will save this. And I just indicate that I did this in PixInsight and Photoshop, that's all. And I will close this out and, and open it up here. 
And there you have it. This is my workflow for processing uh, C-Star images. So if you have found uh, these, this video useful, uh, please let me know in the comments. And if you, again, if you have any uh, thoughts or suggestions on what would be better uh, for folks that are using PixInsight to process uh, C-Star images, Please also include that so the community benefits from it as well. I'm looking forward to uh, using uh, what's currently in beta for the ZWO C-Star. I had a look at the beta version yesterday and I'm really impressed with the functionality of the mosaic feature that they, uh, the video showed. Uh, it's, it's, you can find this on the, um, the ZWO S50 Smart Telescope Facebook page. It's really um, uh, the, one of the most uh, anticipated features uh, for the C Star since the C Star came, originally came out. But I think ZWO is really going to nail it uh, with the way they programmed the, the mosaic. Uh, my hat's off to ZWO. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, clear skies and uh, take care, please.